Hello, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Thomas and I have the pleasure today to have a talk about Riot, the friendly operating system for the IoT. Um, in advance, can I, everybody hear me? Okay, um, so Riot, the operating system for the IT, the friendly operating system for the IT. Um, in advance, I want to give a little bit of a motivation why you we think it's a good idea to have an operating system or software platform for the IoT and how we imagine that to be before I actually go into details concerning Riot. So why? Um, in the course of the past few years, especially like hardware for the IoT got very affordable. Um, those, this hardware is on both sides of the spectrum for the IoT. So there is high end hardware for the IoT in like compared to like a Raspberry Pi Pi. And then there's the other spectrum, the low end spectrum uh, hardware for that, which often runs some kind of Arduino framework or still a lot of people uh, program on them like bare metal. And I mean, a, a lot of amazing projects came out of that already, especially if you look at the makerspace and so on. Like, there's a lot of things going on and a lot of creativity. Um, but at some point, you often reach a, uh, a certain complexity in your project where you have to include some uh, advanced network com uh, connectivity or your application evolves. And at that point, it's, oh, it's a good idea to actually have something that takes work from you. And also, especially if you uh, develop bare metal, it's often hard to like provide a degree on portability. So you're often bound to a <coughs> certain hardware platform or you know, comparable. Um, so why a software platform? It, it speeds up innovation because you spread development costs and on the long term um, it provides robustness and security because you have, you can uh, profit from uh, development others do too. Um, open, especially open source software platforms provide a, a certain degree of trust and transparency. Uh, transparency. And you also, I mean, it's a possibility at some point to um, reduce actually like garbage and they're like everybody knows it like you buy your cool new gadget and at some point the the company just doesn't support it anymore or even worse the soft uh, the company disappears so at this point you want to have some kind of a possibility to actually still use your device and how do we imagine this soft, uh, software platform? Um, experience, especially from Linux, shows um, open source for an operating system is a very good idea. Especially the core sh should be free. And also, if the development is actually driven by, by a broad uh, community, then um, chances are that they, it will still get picked up, even though maybe certain people lose interest in that kind of project. So it also enables 
indirect business models like around this uh, and, uh, software platform or environment. And it especially also provides uh, geopolitical neutrality so you're not locked in or like under too much of an influence of maybe some kind of government or any other means. Um, one of the kind of models for Riot is um, if you can't use Linux for your device, try Riot. So we obviously more focus on the low-end IoT devices. Um, and those devices come, come with a lot of constraints. Um, and within these constraints, there's like, I, I identified like these four um, main points, which are, for one, you have to have a, a good performant kernel. Then it's, uh, the next one is on system level, you want to have interoperability, and this kind of uh, interoperability you also want to have on a network level, so connectivity to the internet of things. And the third, uh, fourth point is trust. Um, on the low end, for low-end IoT devices, there's good news and bad news. The good news, we probably won't have to deal with any kind of GUI or something. Like, if you have access to it via a simple shell, that's, for most cases, uh, sufficient. And because most of those devices will not have uh, a display connected to it. Um, those devices also, uh, in most cases have a very uh, low throughput in terms of network traffic. And they don't run dozens and dozens of applications on one device. So most of those devices have one single purpose. The, ma the bad news, we're dealing with devices that have uh, kilobytes of RAM, typically no MMU. And the use cases for these kind of devices are usually they're running on batteries. So you have to have, you have to be very, very energy efficient, or at least as energy efficient as possible. Um, there is existing software platforms out there for low-end IoT de uh, devices. Um, if you take a look uh, at the timeline, there is uh, especially tiny OS, Contiki and Artos. They were um, they came out when the IoT was actually still called uh, wireless sensor networks. Before we had this fancy marketing name. And after that, there was a lot of standardization pro uh, progress. So we got uh, IEEE eight hundred two fifteen four. We got RFC. Uh, 4944, which is basically I IPv6 on uh, 15.4. And in 2010, we also saw the, the ITF core working group starting, defining uh, IoT protocols like co-op and CBO representation and the like. Um, and then 2000. 13, enter riot. And especially in the last years, a lot of other uh, software platforms popped up, most name, uh, prominent here, Sapphire. But before that, there was already Embed OS by ARM, and also Huawei OS, Light OS. <coughs> and so there is, the good thing is all those operating system, uh, software platforms, operating systems are open source. And besides that, there's also a lot of like closed source alternatives. So what is Riot? Riot um, a, uh, tries to be an OS that fits IoT devices. So we are not targeting Raspberry Pis, we're not targeting 
uh, mobile phones or anything like that. This, these devices have their operating systems and operating systems that, that are very mature and also driven by companies that invest a lot of money into it, often. So we are, t we are trying to get all those devices that, as I mentioned, have a few kilobytes of RAM, no MMU, very energy constrained. That's what we, or for Riot, is part of the IoT. Riot is free and open source. It's licensed under LGPL version 2.1. You can write your code in NCC or C++. Um, there is no kind of C di dialect or something, uh, which you might know from uh, TinyOS. Riot offers some selected POSIX features like pthreads and sockets. And actually starting out with Riot is pretty easy. You don't even need hardware. You just compile Riot on your local Linux machine and start several instances of Riot in parallel. And you can even connect them via tab interfaces so you can actually simulate a, a significant uh, network on your computer. And as you can, it r can run it as a process on your on your Linux system. You can also use the well-established <coughs> tools like Wireshark, Valgrind, and GDP. As mentioned, <laughs> Riot is a free and open source. It has uh, contributors worldwide, so pretty much every continent by now. Those people are either from industry, so somehow affiliated with them, any uh, with a company, or many people are also from academia, and also a lot of hobbyists and makers. Um, the community is self-organized, so there is no, no hierarchy really in it, other than um, the common uh, repository hierarchy, so you have a certain subset of those contributors to, who act as maintainers and do the code review and the like. <coughs> Getting to kernel performance. Right, uh, has a microkernel architecture, and this this kernel uses about 1.5k of RAM on a 32-bit architecture. The Riot scheduler is tickless, so unless there's actually work to do, your device remains in a, or can remain in a, a deep sleep mode. This is mostly for the uh, mentioned energy efficiency. The scheduling is actually deterministic to assure real-time uh, capabilities. And also the interrupt handling is uh, with as little latency as possible. It provides a, a modular structure, so you only compile into your binary the actually that code you actually need. Um, and Riot offers like real multi-threading and an IPC framework. So each thread running on, on your device actually has a separate um, uh, memory region and the like. That's um, the overall uh, or should give a little bit of an impression of the architecture. So on the very bottom, you always have the, the abstraction from the hardware. Um, in Riot, those are kind of called like perif interfaces. So those provide an API to timers, UART, SBI, and the like. On top of that, um, you have drivers for sensors, radio drivers, uh, other kind of network devices, and uh, the kernel. And on top of that, there is in SysNet, it's mostly like the network stack. 
This contains also some additional tools, which I will show later. And in package, um, provides a, a, a mechanism to actually include a, um, existing uh, libraries to include in your right project. Um, the two main points I want to uh, cover next are portability and connectivity. Those are mostly in the, the signed um, building blocks. Regarding connectivity, um, right comes with a, a couple of supported uh, networking technologies, as mentioned, 802.15.4, also 802.3, so e Ethernet. You can use Bluetooth, NFC. You can also uh, run an IPv6 stack over serial and. Or you can also use uh, Canvas. On top of that, we have a very well, by now, tested uh, six LOPAN implementation. So we've been to a couple of interoperability tests, actually testing against Linux and Contiki, um, and also IPv6, as we're talking about IoT. I think there's not much other or many other possibilities. And we ha provide UDP TCP con uh, connections and uh, on top of that for the application layer we have um, our own co-op implementation but as I mentioned before with the package image system you can also use for example lib co-op and since a few weeks, actually, we also um, have a MQTT sensor network um, implementation, which is still very young and not, not yet interoperability interoper tested, but it's in the making. Um, that's like on the bottom to the radio device, you have a, a NetF2 uh, interface. That's Riot's abstraction to the to the to any kind of networking interface. So on top of that, you can easily put um, GNRC, which is uh, Riot's GNRC, like generic uh, networking stack, which uh, includes the features I. I mentioned before, but you can also use basically any other kind of third-party stack. So there is ports for L LWIP, MicroIP, OpenThread, and we also have a support for some more experimental stacks like CCN Lite and NDN. So those are a different approach to basically how you route <coughs> traffic on the internet. Regarding portabili portability, um, we try to, to keep hardware dependencies as low as possible. So in a perfect ca uh, case, you code your application once and run it everywhere. Um, in, a, in a usual full IPv6 co-op application, that's true for 95% are actually hardware independent. Um, in terms of hardware, Riot supports various 32, 16, and 8-bit platforms. So those are mainly like ARM x86, MSP430, MIPS, and AVR platforms. And uh, one, as far as I saw yet, a kind of special thing to write is actually most of the drivers interacting with the, the, the MCU, so timers and so on, are actually written by write contributors. So we are not using um, vendor libraries or anything like that. Um, and 
to actually compile your project, you can either use GCC, which is um, the, the standard tool chain, but you can also use LLVM. And as mentioned a couple of times already, you can also use existing libraries like libcoop, libfixmath, LWIP, microECC, and Relic, as to give us an example. And porting actually your hardware to write is pretty, or we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, Usually it doesn't take more than a f hours or days, depending how much support for your platform is actually already in right. So if you have some kind of Cortex-M based board, it's very likely that the port to your platform will be done or can be done within an afternoon. If you actually bring in a new CPU and so on, it will probably take you a little bit longer, but especially if you take, um, for example, a Cortex-M platform, there's a lot of reusable code already existing in the tree, You can so you don't have to deal with all the, the, the scheduling and so on on your new platform, so you can easily reuse that. And it's also meant for us maintainers to actually reduce code to take care of. Um, in SILS, we, we try to provide so, some additional tools for developers. So as mentioned, we, there's a, a wrapper uh, for enabling developers using POSIX sockets and pthreads. And there's also the men uh, before mentioned shell. Um, a shell is basically you can connect your computer to your device over a serial interface and then interact with the device using, for example, PS to see all the threads running on your device and their memory consumption. And you can also use if config to actually configure your uh, the one or multiple networking devices. Um, such that we also offer some uh, crypto and hash algorithms. Um, you can write your, co your code also in C++. Um, we not necessarily encourage you to, but you can. Um, and you can also take your Arduino sketch, for example, and just run it within write. So we, we implement m the most uh, frequently used uh, Ardu Arduino APIs. So you can really just take your, your, your loop and put it in the main file and it will run. We also sub uh, provide you with a CBOR and SENML um, interpreter. So those are both uh, technologies coming out of the IETF core working group. CBOR is mostly the representation of the data and SENML is, tries to be a, a common uh, markup language for sensor data. So we then we're approaching trust. Um, if it's secured, the IoT can really be groundbreaking in a positive way. So the IoT will penetrate our daily lives and already had, um, already did. But it, it also ha um, has a lot of threat in it, so especially if you take a, a building of yours with, with a couple hundred of devices, there's like concerns coming up about privacy, security, and also like reliability, and what's gonna happen if the company I bought X devices is not um, able to support those anymore because of any reason. So the IoT is challenging, but 
what is possible if we provide an end-to-end -end open source solution? So you have Riot in the internet, uh, <laughs> Linux in the internet, and also maybe on the gateway, and maybe at Riot device, you have an end-to-end -end open source setup. And what we also want to promote is an end-to-end -end secure and open communication <coughs> stack. So those devices can actually still, um, there's no, no magic to the protocol. It's like openly specified. So it's really about the, from the device to the server, it's all open and hopefully secured. Um, a little bit of history. So Riot did actually a kernel as a result of research projects called Fire Kernel and Mucleos. And in 2013, there was the rebranding to Riot. The source code was moved to GitHub and which gave us the, a much broader audience and uh, development then really much uh, accelerated. So there was the, the code grew significantly and also the community grew. In numbers, um, in 2016, there were 3,690 commits to the right code base from about 150 contributors and reviewed by 30 maintainers. <laughs> Up to the, uh, today, we support more than 60 boards, so mostly development boards by various vendors. Those boards feature more than 35 MCUs and we have drivers for more than 25 sensors. Um, last summer we had our very first Riot Summit to just uh, provide an a, a opportunity for the community to gather and have talks and just celebrate the success a little bit. And we are also still in the process of actually forming a foundation or association to provide a, a kind of legal body behind the project which can interface with companies and the like. Um, the usual work is usual as we have a time-based release model, so we release every three days a month. Um, that cha we changed that from, from a feature-based release model because we just saw it just delays some releases often too, for too long. We have a roadmap to like uh, gather input from the community and from companies and to like to help the, the like core developer team to focus on specific topics. And one means of that is actually the so-called task forces. So people organize themselves in groups and sit together either physically or virtually and actually try to come up with solutions. And the whole development process is actually very open so you can basically see it all on GitHub. It's mostly done via GitHub pull requests and issues. And besides that, we have those lovely hack and X sessions, which are basically once a month to bring together uh, mostly maintainers and uh, contributors to work on certain issues that uh, arise w during the code review. General communication is mostly done on mailing lists and a lot of people discuss things or just chat in the IC channel. So coming to an end right in a nutshell, right is a free open source platform for portable IT software and tries to be uh, functionally equivalent to Linux. So open source 
open access pro uh, protocol stacks and that all driven by an uh, enthusiastic community. Um, with that, I want to say thank you. We have a Twitter account for the news and the uh, before mentioned uh, mailing lists and the uh, IRC channel. And I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Um, there was a very long ongoing discussion within the contributor uh, community and LGPL was the consensus at some point. There were others mentioned as Apache, MIT, BSD, um, but in the end it got LGPL. Um, but what was the strongest argument for this? Um, mostly to, it's like contributions made, the people want them to be still like maintained. So the people don't want to make contributions and then somebody else uses it and never contributes back. So that was one of the mo uh, most cited arguments and so on. Anything else? Mm -hmm. You said each thread gets its own memory region, mm -hmm. but I thought this is targeted for <coughs> processors that don't have an MMU. Mm -hmm. So I, usually I think of uh, processes getting memory region is something that is uh, with a virtual memory region. Can I have an MMU? Mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand what you meant by that. No, we, uh, here uh, in in the thread model, it's basically every thread becomes its each um, stack size. So you have a certain amount of memory designated to this thread. You can you can uh, change those numbers. The default is uh, 1k for each per thread and this is for this, uh, this thread only. Um, we have kind of there is uh, work ongoing to support MPUs, so, so memory protection units, but n as those Devices don't usually have an MMU. There's, that's like how far you can go with memory separation and so on. Anything else? <coughs> okay. Then thank you, everybody.